All right, it's the night of July 25th, Tuesday night. Let's talk about the stock market today, and uh, we'll we'll preview a little bit for tomorrow and later this week. I am I'm just starting to become floored at how reliable the algorithm is becoming, picking off these stocks to straddle and and making money. Um, it's just very interesting day, and and I kind of explain. I, I have a bunch of positions that I've been keeping track of. And this is how uh, everything I had mentioned in previous videos about which stocks to buy and which stocks to straddle. I put them in here and, and I haven't updated for the new prices today, but I just wanted to, to show you, you know, all, all these are up here and live. And sure enough, Merck moved down today. Kimberly Clark announced earnings and they went down today. So I believe it was their put that I sold for more than the cost of both of them. Both of them cost almost like $390. I think I sold it for about $425 or something like that. Sold the put today. Just, it's amazing how reliable this is. And it made money here again today. And we'll watch Gilead and we'll watch American Express, which is the only one you might potentially lose on that expires this week. And I also bought a call on Tesla just because I'm a Tesla fan. I didn't do the straddle strategy. I just bought a call on them. That one's down right now. So we'll see if they can go up before the end of the week. But I want to get back to the overall look at everything. So we're tracking when companies are reporting earnings and we're figuring out if their, their call and put options or the straddle on that company is worth it. And I had a friend of mine, he decided to buy Raytheon last week. And I, I was like, ah, government contractors don't move all that much. But he's liked that they had earnings coming up. And sure enough, they had apparently their worst stock day since 9-11 was what I heard. Uh, unbelievable. So they dropped nine bucks. He cleared, uh, I think, 500 something dollars on selling the put today and was just like, wow, this is the easiest thing ever. I just made a ton of money. I'm like, yep, works that way sometimes when you catch good news. So Raytheon moved, had earnings. Logitech, which showed up on this list, guess what? They moved more than they need to. They moved eight bucks today. They went up, but they moved. And sure enough, they only needed to move $5 worth. They moved eight, $8 worth. They had to move a lot, but they did move a lot. Uh, Alaska Air Group, General Electric, all these companies moved more than they needed to. 3M, and of course, Kimberly Clark. They moved just enough. Um, and I actually sold them at a little better spot than where they finished because I put in a limit order to sell them. But they they were they moved drastically right at the reporting of the earnings and then kind of leveled a little bit. And then they went back down some more. And sure enough, you couldn't lose. And I sold one today and profited. So seeing that happen, it just makes you, you know, it makes you want to do is it makes you want to look through the list of companies and see are there any that are reporting soon like eog resources um here lionel basil industries don't know what that is but they re report in two days um you know is there anything that's reasonable to to look at well let's sort it by when these companies are actually reporting and if they're reporting wednesday being the 26th, you may not be able to act on them in time. So they could be reporting pre-market sometimes. So these ones are tough because you don't know what's going to happen. But as soon as you go down to two days or more, let's look at the two days or more companies and see if anything pops out as being a really good buy. Bristol Myers Squibb is very cheap, but they're only a $63 a share company. And the way this algorithm works, basically, when you get a deal on any of these companies that are reporting earnings, the answer is probably yes. So I would say tentative yes. Not a great one, but tentative yes. Uh, Digital Realty Trust is a little more expensive. So that's that's too much at $600 because this number has got to be low. That's why it's green here. Total risk being low means that that's a percentage sort of risk. It's not just a nominal number because you have a certain value of one of the options at any given time and you want to risk less so that they have to range less for you to, to make money in, in your entirety. McDonald's is 900 bucks. And 
they are 200 retail company and they only need to move 3%. It's a possibility, but they're just too expensive at 900. Like that needs to get down to uh, be like five or 600 bucks at the most. Uh, so it's too much, but they might win. You know, they, they might do it. It's not as bad as you would think because that break even boom number is not bad. American Tower REITs, too expensive. Northrop Grumman, too expensive at 1700 bucks. STM Electronics, $51 a share though. That's 400 bucks is too much for a $51 a share company. Notice that Bristol Myers Squibb, much better deal. $63 a share company, only 212. See how that's like half the cost of the 437 of STM. So STM, too low of a share price. You can see the break even boom number is almost eight and a half percent. So they have to move a lot for you to make money. That's why that's not really a good deal. ABV, man, um, close. It's really, really close. Break-even boom is only 4.6. They're usually cheaper than this, but it's because they're reporting earnings. So 600 bucks is just right on the borderline and they'll probably get there, but it'll be probably be close. And it's not a great deal, but it's okay. Hershey, 740 bucks, and they're $244 a share. Notice that Hershey only has to move 3%. They had some ups and downs through this quarter, I remember, already. Uh, I think, are they taking on Mr. Beast? Is that what's going on? Mr. Beast and Beast Beast Bars or Beast Chocolate or whatever he's got. Beast Feastables, I think it is, Feastables. Um, so he's uh, he's trying to make some waves, and I think Hershey is a recipient of some of that competition potentially because they're so into chocolate so this could be very interesting and 740 bucks is not that expensive for a 244 dollar share company as reflected in a break-even boom number that's only three percent notice that of all these companies that are reporting here in the next few days what was the lowest break-even boom number that we could see on here cme is 3.09 3.33 is Bristol Myers Squibb. McDonald's is only a three. MasterCard 3.5 and the Hershey down here at the, is the lowest one so far at 3.03. .03. There are a lot of reasons to, to potentially try that one out. Um, the only downside is it's 740 bucks. So for some reason they don't move at all, you could be out the better part of 700 bucks. So like you lose like 500 bucks on that, depending on where they finish around your strike price that you're going to name. And the last time I updated this, it was at 240. They're about $2 off from the strike price that I originally researched this at. This is probably actually a little bit cheaper right now as well, because another day or two has gone by. So this may be cheaper and, and that, that's a possibility. So I'm going to tentatively, I'm going to say the algorithm does say try Hershey, especially at under 700 bucks. They they probably have more than a $6, $7 move in them after earnings. So it is a tentative yes. Valero, 500 bucks. No, stay away. Masco, I've never heard of. Shell. So Royal Dutch Shell, I saw this and said this is cheap. Um, look at that 2.97% break even boom number. Super low, meaning Dutch Shell does not have to move that much. Problem is, they're only a $63 a share company. So, are they going to go down to 61 or up to 65 after earnings? Good chance of that because it's going to be earnings. So, th that's also a tentative yes because they're so cheap there. You're risking a lot less. You're only risking. 187, it's got to finish somewhere. So you're you're probably only risking about half of that in the worst case scenario where they like totally didn't move at all is maybe, maybe you're risking a hundred bucks or 90 bucks, but not even because you'll see the way that they're just going to have to move around some, some fluctuating amount so that one of your options is at least worth a hundred bucks at some point before Friday. These are options that are expiring only in a couple of days though. I'm saying this is the rare instance that I'm going to try out a three-day option and expect to win because the earnings period is over that time period. And movement after earnings is a disproportionate movement and the straddle takes advantage of that. Baxter International, 280 bucks with only $48 in share, super low. They're even, see how much more expensive they are than Shell? And they're a lower share price. They're $100 more expensive than Shell and their share price is $18 lower. So they can't possibly move as much as Shell could move. And, you know, potentially because it's, 
So it, it shows you what a better deal it is for Shell there. DX, CIM, Mohawk too expensive, Live Nation too expensive, even though they'll probably move. Sam Adams, Beer Boston Beer Company, way too expensive at $3,000. Um, Texas Roadhouse, 700 bucks. Too expensive, 800 bucks for Caribbean cruises, Royal Caribbean. That's, they got to move 8%, yikes, but they're crazy. The cruise lines go in crazy directions all the time. So T-Mobile is on here. And I'm tempted to look up the new price of this because I think it's getting bought. And I actually did glance at it and I made that decision. So T-Mobile historically has done well. And has some drastic movements sometimes we're going to look at what the option costs right now because i think i'm going to advise because the algorithm is going to advise to take that so for this three-day option period because earnings are supposed to be reported um it's unconfirmed but hopefully happening this week so a call at a strike price of 142 is it going up a little bit? 142 is between $340 and $355. And the put is between 287 and 291. Meaning if all things stay the same tomorrow morning, you could buy this for about 636 bucks. 4.47% movement. Yeah. I, I mean, it's not as good as, as you, you want it to be. You want to get this break-even boom number under 4%. It's at 4.5%, but it's earnings for them. And they move a lot anyway, so they probably hit this. Probably. But it's not a great, great deal. So I'm not going to super overly recommend it because it's not as good as uh, some of the other things that we've seen on here. Canadian Pacific is cheap. Uh, fairly cheap but not great. Boy, gaming, KBR. Boston Scientific is only $290, but they're only $52 a share. The break-even boom number is not great. Ferrisign, too expensive. Enphase Energy, expensive. Has to move 12%. But people, a lot of people think that ENPH Enphase is going to move a lot because they are a higher share price, $179, and they do move drastically. They did last time. I think they moved 20 something dollars a share um, after earnings last time. And that's why you're seeing the cost of those options in, in a few thousand dollar range. Hartford Financial, 500 bucks, still a little too expensive. Monolith International is a possibility. It's really cheap. Look at that, 3.39% boom. They are reporting earnings. Like that's a possibility right there. It's one of the better ones, Monolith is. Power Textron. Getting to the ones. AstraZeneca reports this week and they're only 226. That's also recommendable. Now they might report be reporting after earnings on the 28th. So it would have to be pre-market. Uh, it's a question you want the answer to. And I'm going to look it up right now. A, well, whatever. Do your own research. If it's if they're reporting after um, after market on the twenty eighth, then that's why this is so cheap. And you want the one that would go the next period goes to the eight four paper um, ending expiration date period. Procter and Gamble also potentially at five hundred, but you really need to look out another week because these are reporting on Friday, and that's that's too close to the expiration date. So these dates would need to be changed. But I just wanted to to browse and. You know, you can start to look at things coming up next week and try to find deals here as we update these. But this thing's going great. It's going great. It's just winning. I mean, we'll see if American Express, uh, Express can pull off a win because if it does this week, then it goes perfect with all the ones that I bought because Gilead doesn't expire until next Friday, the 4th. Um, do you come in and try to buy Raytheon after this massive movement? You just missed it. So maybe, maybe, maybe not. The algorithm, of course, does say to still buy them. 
um, but to buy them out to a different option period. And I'm not sure what the price has changed to. Anything else up on this list that has, this is 28 days till earnings, nine days till earnings. There's this line, Lionel Basil, electronic arts. Wow. Okay. This one I'm going to look up. Video games tend to move, especially summertime. A lot, of, a lot of summertime video game action going on. So you want this option period for the one that expires on a four, right? So we're going to look at that one. And right now we're looking at about a $140 uh, price, strike price. So the strike price here is one. 40 and you can buy that for between $310, $330 and the put at 140 is 330 and 350. So you can see this is getting more expensive. So now all of a sudden this has to be almost 5% and it's 600 bucks, but at $139 a share, they also probably have it in them. So when you start to see things with earnings coming up and the price not being super unreasonable, that's just above the range that I would like. I mean, if you got that for under $600, I'd say go for it. Uh, but you're, you're getting really, really close to stuff that's got a great chance of making money and going one way or the other. 13 days for Tyson Foods, but they're a cheapie. Merck, of course, is reporting next week. They've already profited on two different instances of buying two different Mercks this week. And I'm waiting on the other side of them um, for Friday. But like just it was the easiest money ever. Just they just wait a day or wait another day and they one of them goes profitable. Doesn't matter. Um, even though they only moved a buck 26, today, that was enough to put one of my puts into profitable range. This one. You know, yesterday it was right here and it was worth 158 bucks. I sold it for 200 and God, what did I sell it for? I sold it for 310 or something. I, I sold it for about 300 bucks, I think. I'm looking at my activity real fast just so that I can get an answer for that. I sold that Merc for, sorry, only 260 actually. So I bought it for 104 plus 140. Yeah, that's right. Uh, so that's right. I didn't take a huge profit on it, actually. As you can see, I spent $245 on it. And I only sold it for 260 or 259 after fees. So I only made about 15 bucks. But I decided that that's, that's what you do here is you'll take a, a small profit if you can early. Because while I sold this one here, you know, and I got $259 for it. Uh, it. This one's now off the list and I need to add it to the other list below and finalize. But I still have this, this call right here, which has a value attached to it. And so I'm up, I'm up more than, you know, the $15 that I sold. I'm also up the value of that other option, which right now is $16.50. So that's another... 16 bucks, basically I'm up $30 on a $260 investment in two days, right? Two market days. And that's why just finding those in the sheet and just playing them is resulting in the easiest decisions ever and just banking profit daily. Made Kimberly Clark today, made Merck today, waiting on American Express, which has gotten close. The American Express I have, just in case you want to wonder like how much could I potentially lose, right? Well, American Express... I have this invested right now in American Express. I've got $440 invested. The current market value of what it says I own is it says that this one, a 170 put, is worth $386.12. And the other one is worth $45.50. The, the call is because they, they've been going down lately. So I'm only down about $9 overall, actually, on my American Express. However, on Wednesday, because they've been going down recently, 
they need to continue to go down for this put to get up to over 450 bucks where I can make a sale for it and bank some profit. So I'm hoping that American Express starts the day down tomorrow and goes down at least a dollar or more. It'd be awesome if American Express started the day down like 2% or something and went down a couple bucks because I would easily be able to sell this for probably like five or $600 on the open if that's what happens pre-market. So that's what I'm rooting for to have happen. Uh, if they go up, American Express starts to go up, then this is going to start to lose value. And this one is going to start to gain value as they move from their current share price of 160, they're just below 167 right now, they're 166.80. And it, it, these, these strike prices are around 170. So we want them to go down. If they go up though, then you start to get into a situation where you might lose more money because the value of the put is going to start going down because the company is going to start going up. And that means that the put becomes worth less because the put is, is, is hedging on the company going down from this strike price. You get, you get value here because if you exercise this option, you'd be able to sell shares of American Express at 170, even though right, right now they're at 166.80. So they're lower. You have this premium that you could sell hundred shares with by exercising this contract. So the, basically, if the if American Express starts to go up, you start to get concerned because now this is going to go down in value faster than this is going to go up in value, the one that's far away here. So you can start to lose some value dramatically and, and portions of that $400. If they go up, for example, like if they get close to 170 tomorrow, they go up like two bucks, they get to 169 or 170. This thing's only going to be worth like $150. You're going to lose $200 or something in value in that in in whatever you know in the day and so then you got to watch out which is why it's very important to one take that profit as soon as you can whenever you get the chance meaning if they start the day down tomorrow i'm absolutely going to sell this for more than 450 dollars as soon as i get the chance to and it settles down for three minutes that i'm absolutely going to do that because you want to bank profit now and then you hold the other american express and try to have it turn in your direction and then you sell this one for more where you get most of your profit, right? That's that's the way to handle this. And you can see that we've we've won with Merck twice, Schwab, Johnson Johnson, Abbott Labs, and Kimberly Clark, and Merck again. I've got Gilead that expires next week, and the only one left is American Express. And of course, rooting for my Tesla to go up, which is not a straddle. It's just me rooting on Tesla to go up mm -hmm. uh, because I like that company. And I think that they are continuing to just change the environment of what a vehicle is and bringing us into the, the next millennium already. So anyway, I, I felt like doing the video because I just, I'm just so impressed with the reliability of what's coming out of here. And um, I feel good about telling you things, you know, as we went through this, you know, these things, they pop up here. Um, United must have just reported earnings, I guess. Um, boy, Zscaler Z loves to move. That company is a mover. They are expensive, but they Zscaler does move a lot. But yeah, I feel reasonably confident saying that the algorithm, the algorithm thinks Merck is going to be a good deal again. I got asked about this on semiconductor and it's a possibility. You can see that the break even boom number is 5.4%, which is a little high, but they are reporting earnings. So they're a $100 share company. Spread range is really good. Uh, I could check what the new price is, but it might. I'm not. Yeah, because you need this for, sorry, for the this price is definitely going to be more expensive. I think it's up to $800 is what I was told. So yeah, it's just too expensive. Like you got to keep this break-even boom number down. There are companies where the break-even boom number is really low and they are reporting earnings. As I discussed when we, we were browsing by uh, order of earnings, right? Just in, in summary, for those that are still with us, the ones that I said that it said to buy, which I'm probably going to buy some of, was, yeah, I pretty much convinced myself on Bristol Myers Squibb, if that's really reporting earnings. So that was one. AbbV is a, such a maybe, <laughs> such a maybe, but I can't voice it. I, I, I'm pretty sure I'm going to give Hershey's a shot. 
we're going to try the Hershey squirt and, and really check that out. I'm, the last thing we're going to do is look up Hershey because of, we're doing this because of Mr. Beast. I think that Hershey did not expect Mr. Beast to try to take over chocolate and that might start to come out. So they have Hershey reports apparently this week on Thursday. The strike price we could get, I already typed this in, didn't I? Let's find out. 200, 290. No, I didn't. 200. Sorry, 260 and 290. So what the put is and the call is. 240 250 strike price 430 and 460. That's the problem. So that puts Hershey up to 720. But the 2.9 for 0.5% break even boom number says go for it. So because there are earnings here, that is $720, but that's got a pretty good shot of hitting in one direction or the other. So that is a tentative yes. Shell was good because they're so much cheaper than a company. Yeah, Shell was good as well. T-Mobile was almost, almost a yes. So close. They, they, I, I give the benefit to T-Mobile because they've been so successful for me in the past, but that is just a little more expensive than I want. I almost wait until the end of Wednesday to get a depreciated value here somewhat and try to get this for under 600 bucks. You get it for under 600 bucks and they're reporting earnings on Thursday. That's probably a winner with this company at $142 a share. They'll move $9 a share in any direction. They'll probably be down too. They'll, they've been going up, so they'll probably go down more than nine bucks, but they will do that. And and that's that's means you'd make like $300 if they moved nine bucks and you get it for six. So think about that. And I think that's about it. All right, so good luck, everyone. May all your trades be winning. We are trying to keep it perfect. And if American Express goes down on the open by a dollar or more, that will keep it perfect so far, um, for sure, for this week. And although we'll see what we buy tomorrow. We might buy some stuff that expires Friday and really get risky. All right, good luck, everyone. May all your trades be winning.